Hello everybody and welcome to Green Star Trading with me Tom. All views, opinions and ideas expressed in this video are my own and do not constitute financial or trading advice in any way. Right, for the next few minutes we're going to be looking at the SPY, which is our proxy for the S&P 500. We're going to start with our Elliott Wave analysis first and then wrap things up with some basic technical analysis at the end of the video. Right, so without further ado, let's get on the way. First thing we have to acknowledge is that the SPY did make an intraday all-time high on Friday. So we are dealing with a confirmation of our bullish count that we've been talking about for a couple of months. Um, I continue to suspect that we will top in the summer and then we will roll over. We seem to be on course for doing so. So let's just have a quick reminder of where we are. We're looking at this fifth and final intermediate wave into a primary wave into a cycle wave five and we're currently tracking the fifth minor wave so if we just look at from intermediate wave degree you can see how we've come up to a three to a four and now we've got five minor waves inside the intermediate wave that we're now working on into a five of a five of a five of a five all right then so let's come into the more recent price action and uh, see what we can see so what you may have noticed is we have a bit of a rising wedge shape going on here at the moment so what I'm suggesting is that we're in an ending diagonal that we've done a one two we've done a three expanding flat into a four and now we're in an ending diagonal pattern and I'm expecting as you can see by this little curve we've got here I'm expecting an overthrow um, the reason I'm expecting an overthrow is the top of the the current um, overhead trend line we've got where we've got a con um, point of contact here, point of contact here, point of contact here. So this is an overhead trend that we keep bouncing on. Uh, if we were to fall out of this wedge somewhere along the top of this trend and then break down, it wouldn't bring us to any of these juicy targets we've got up here. And some of these are really quite strong fib level confluences I want to discuss. So it is very common to see an overthrow of a rising wedge. Um, so that's what, I've, that's what I'm expecting. I can't count this as an impulse, it doesn't matter how many times I try. If I come in now to the uh, one hour, let's just come back off of log. Yeah, this initial move off of the 12th of May low, we get a three wave move here, A, B, C. I can't see five waves in here at all. And I've come down to smaller time frames, we've got two gaps here, and we can't see any evidence of any kind of five wave symmetry going on. Um, for an impulse wave here. So I'm just counting three waves up into a one, three waves down into a two, another three waves up into a three, expanding flat three waves pattern into a four, and now I'm expecting another three wave move higher into that overthrow into these overhead targets. So let's just talk about for a minute what these targets are. So we have the minor wave one from four. That's nice and simple. That's simply the length of wave one here projected from the four. Now this is more common when you get a full extension of the three to the 1.618 but if we just check that momentarily you'll see that we still got um, a significantly longer three than a wave one. So let's just come up here, come down to the two and you can, uh, just a little bit lower, you can see we come pretty much to the 1318 here which is uh, not an actual fib number that people use uh, very often but it's a level I see does crop up if you go through the 123.6 a bit like the 65 catching the 61.8 the 130.18 catches the 123.6 often if you go through it and then the next target is the 161.8 which is where we would normally expect to see an extended free so in that case where you do get an extended free one and five tend to have parity with one another or very close to so although we don't come straight to that 1618 target with the three it is still perfectly reasonable to look for resistance at the minor one from four which brings us to 431 spot zero six so we should be keeping an eye on that and this is white line here above that we have the 61.8 percent of minor one and three so all we're doing is taking the full length of one and three and projecting that from the four and that brings us to 433 spot 29 which is our next target which is this yellow line here that's a golden ratio so one worth looking at and then we've got another golden ratio here at 434 spot 85 now this is very interesting because this is the uh, length of primary one and three projected from primary four brings us to four three four spot eight five right within a tick or two of minor one and three from four so there's a double confluence double golden ratio confluence up here uh, waiting 
with this minor one from four as well so i would expect resistance up here obviously we've got the top of the fib channel as well that we're coming up to that was served to be you know consistent resistance all the way up essentially using the, our intermediate one to find our intermediate three to find our intermediate five so we could have a um like a blow off overthrow and come up into these levels maybe to the top of the channel and then roll over and uh, you know this could take a while because you've got a top you've got to get a reaction five ways down then you've got to get three ways back on a larger time frame then you've got to get a one and a two of a three before you finally come down so you'll be going one two one two one two this could drag us out into late july or even into late august potentially it depends how long this takes the to top it could melt down quickly but i suspect the bulls will pull up a fight and hang you know hang on by the skin of their teeth for quite a while before we finally roll over there is one final target here also up at the edge of the channel this is another golden ratio i'm not sure if this is going to be relevant at all i've just decided to pull it up here because we have a count of the dow one of our alternative counts in the dow was the dead dow idea which is uh simply that everything up from the covid low has just been a giant wave b well that would be looking for a golden ratio of one 618 extension of that swing high swing low so i'm literally talking from the Jan from january 2020 and then the collapse for the um the you know what disease bringing us to the march lows and then all the way up from there would be a 1.618 extension of that swing high swing low and that brings us to 445 spot 10 up here like i said not sure if it's relevant but it's a, I put it on the chart anyway, just in case we can we come up, come back down, come back up again. It's something else to look for. So, in the coming weeks, um, days and weeks, we should be looking for first the minor wave one from four, which is four three one. Then we should be looking for the sixty one eight minor one and three from four, and then the primary. So anywhere in here and around the edge of the channel, I would expect to find resistance. It's been consistent the whole time up through this thing. So um, yeah, that's basically what I see. I think we're gonna. I think my original idea, which we'll be talking about for a few months now, that we're gonna top out in the summer, is probably going to be the case. So, uh, one quick note. Obviously, you're probably as wondering to yourself with the price action that's been going on here and the new high in the S&P. Am I still bearish on the Nasdaq? Well, I'm going to be doing an update on the NDX early next week as well. Um, I still have a primary bearish count for it with the assumption that the techs are leading the way down and they won't make a new all-time high could be wrong and I am losing faith in that bearish interpretation and therefore I have a bullish interpretation which I first presented a week or so ago and I've updated that count so we'll look into both of those um, I hope to get the Dow updated as well later in the week if I find the time but I've got a lot of assets on my uh, books that I want to get through all right so that's the, that, uh, that concludes the Elliott Wave portion of the video so let's now come and have a look at the basic technical analysis so first thing we're going to do is hide this count and we're going to go all the way out to the weekly time frame and we're going to zoom in on the most recent price data or more recent price data and then we're going to bring up our moving averages we have a 10 in yellow 20 in blue 16 in orange and 250 in green these are all exponential moving averages we're going to bring up our rsi and our macd our rsi is set to a 10 close with the green 30 level representing oversold and the red 70 level representing overbought we also have the macd here with a uh, 10 in uh, a blue line which is the 10 moving average and a 20 uh, which is the orange moving average here so blue for the short term orange for the long term and uh, what can we see here on a weekly time frame? Well, the first thing we've got to take note of is a a week of open, closing roughly ever so slightly above where we opened. You know, we barely, barely we've done a lot during the week, but we've settled pretty much where we bag, began, but slightly higher. So we've got a long wick to the downside and almost no body to the candle at all. Very bullish looking candle. We've had this correction, we've come up, we've come back, and now we're going up again. So that fits our count, expecting a, a higher high and this higher high to continue up for a little while. Still above the 10, 20, 60, 250 exponential moving averages. Long, long way away from our 250 now on the weekly time frame. Um, getting on for 30 plus percent, maybe I haven't actually checked uh, well actually as of Friday's close it's now 42.33% so this is a pretty huge huge gap between our uh, long term moving average on the weekly time frame and price as you can see we are I mean, in terms of like the long term price move away from the 250 
the green line we are really stretching things now uh, everything has just been accelerating upwards obviously it's been so bullish this market's been so insanely bullish looking back at it now and uh, yeah so continue to push higher into the, into the coming week or two uh, but this is getting extreme we have to be aware of that and you know the more extreme things get the more violent they tend to reverse now if we look at the RSI we still have we've been up in overbought conditions we've come back down just below them and back into them currently if we were to just finish off in an ending diag a little bit higher we could end up with bearish divergence between the the high on the 3rd of May and whatever, wherever we set our new high of course we wouldn't be calling it until it happened we'd be looking for some kind of candlestick pattern which supports it some kind of a shooting star or maybe a hanging man or an abandoned baby whatever some kind of bearish formation on the daily time frame and a nice negative wick on the weekly time frame would, would help support us as well but we were putting in some kind of reversal where we'd expect to see our completed count that's why we'll be looking at those resistance levels that we set out so uh macd a couple of red bars in the histogram but no bearish break it was just this period of consolidation here above the 10 exponential weekly moving average short term average cross over the long term moving average but like i said no sign of a reversal just a temporary lull before i think crossing over bullish again and heading higher so day time frame how do we look really nice uh bullish close on the friday a uh, big thick body wick to the downside which tested the 10 exponential moving average on the daily time frame above the 20 above the 60 miles from the 250 again this looks to be somewhere around 12 15 percent or so above price just taking a rough glance uh, maybe more let's just have a quick look it's nice to just do this every once in a while just to get an idea of how far away from um, the long term we're getting about 14% I was about right so yeah significant move significantly above the 250 on the daily time frame still above the 60 as well RSI has gone from overbought but not made it all the way to oversold below the neutral zone and worked its way back up more of an extreme I mean if we if I say if if we put in another high here after completing five wave moves and get a sign of a reversal, so a reaction in terms of Elliott waves, so five wave down, three wave back on a smaller time frame plus some kind of candlestick pattern to support it, and we see signs of a reversal, we'd very likely be putting in a divergent high on the RSI. So from this high to a lower high is what I'd expect to see as we come into the market top into the summer in the next few weeks. And I think even stronger divergence you would see on the MACD here between the high here and whatever high we set. We've got to come up a long way. We'd have to be extremely bullish to push much higher to undo that inevitable divergence. Not inevitable yet, but it just looks like we're setting up for it. So uh, we'll keep an eye on we'll keep an eye out for that as well so i think that's basically it guys at the moment so like i said i will come back to you with a um, video early in the week for ndx as well we want to cover that if you're new to the channel you've liked what you've seen please smash the like subscribe leave us a comment in the comment section below if you want to hit the little bell notification icon to remain informed of future video releases and uh, thank you as always to my patrons your support is greatly ap uh, appreciated if you are interested in becoming a patreon now is the perfect time to do it it's the start of the month so if you're willing to part with 15 quid for the top tier tier 3 you will be getting full benefit of the um, monthly dividend calendar and all of the stock picks if that's not really your gig you can always give us the 10 pound um, tier 2 which gives you access to the discord access to me directly where we you can chat freely with other members and myself share ideas technical analysis ideas get access to all my weekly chart updates which we don't get anywhere else and of course weekly exclusive videos and uh, if you just want to throw us a fiver which is the bottom tier to help support us you still get a, an exclusive video per week anyway so now's the time to do it if you want to do it it's always better to do it at the start of the month and uh, yeah there's a link in the description box below if you're interested go check it out also there's a link in the description box below to my twitter feed if you're not following me yet head over and do so all right guys take care of yourselves and i'll be back with you later in the week all the best bye bye